Hello everyone, my name is Stephen Murray and welcome to the Gift of Giving. For those of you who are tuning in for the first time, this program focuses on non-profits, foundations and 501c3s here in the state of Nevada. Our guests are representatives who are there in the trenches making our state a better and brighter place. And today's guest, I'm very, very pleased to welcome Courtney Kaplan. She's from the Nevada Donor Network. Thank you. Thanks for joining us today, Courtney, Absolutely. and welcome to the program. Thank you. And Thank you for having us. Now you're the you're on the advisory, uh, an advisory board member of Nevada Donor yes. Network. Yes. Yes. And um, all the powers that be in the organization were out of town, but they all said you were an encyclopedia of knowledge on the organization. <laughs> oh boy, so, pressure. Um, <laughs> no pressure. No pressure. None intended. <laughs> So anyway, please give us a brief over, overview of the Nevada Donor Network and when it was founded. Sure. Nevada Donor Network was founded in 1987. And their main focus is and always has been in healing and saving lives. Um, obviously, with organ donation, um, there is a loss involved for a second chance at life. So the delicate balance and the support that Nevada Donor Network provides for both sides of the coin um, is absolutely life-changing for families uh, like mine. And having that support changes how you live the rest of your life and how that is handled. Cool. And that's what Nevada Donor Network does. It, it provides the support from healing, saving lives, the donor side of things it's it's an it's an amazing amazing foundation it sounds like a, a very 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 worthwhile one yes and now how did you come to get involved and land up being an advisory board member how, how did that come about what made you sure. choose the donor network sure a uh, uh, good question um I have been in the medical community for over 20 years. Uh, I've mm -hmm. known what organ donation is, um, just as many other facets of medicine. Um, it's, it's useful, it's helpful, it's, it's ideal, but it, it changes things when it becomes personal, right? Yes, it yes. all changes when, yes. when it hits the front door. Um, on May 17th, 2019, I, um, it was a Friday and Went about my day, said goodbye to the kids in the morning, shared coffee. Uh, my son, Michael, put on his riding helmet and his jacket and had his little face mask up and his cheeks were like, hey, mom, got to go. You know, it was just a regular day. Uh, he told me that he was going to grab his cap and gown because he was about to graduate mm -hmm. and uh, get his tickets. And I was like, Mike, see if you can get some more tickets so we can get more family. You know, totally basic. Six hours later, I'm in the emergency room, uh, unsure the outcome of my son's accident on the other side of the double doors. I oh mean, it God. just, it's, it's yeah. that shift. Yes. It, it happens. I'm not the only one. Um, and I always say, you know, it was my turn. I, I it was my turn. And from that moment on, and when we soon learned that my son's accident was a traumatic brain injury and he would not be able to recover from that, um, I was reminded of a year prior, my son uh, elected to be an organ donor at the DMV. And we had a conversation. Him being 18 and able to fill out his own application, he elected to be an organ donor. Um, which all of our family already was, you know, again, we understood what it meant. It's impactful. It's saving lives. However, um, you know, when, like I said, when it becomes personal, you, you get to choose, you know, how, how do you want to respond to this, mm -hmm. to this outcome? And I said to myself, um, when I realized that Michael would not be able to choose if he could walk out of the hospital, I could choose how I was going to walk out mm -hmm. and recognizing that Michael was, was saving six lives. And although I miss him every day and obviously, you know, 
grief is a, a lifelong sentence. I always say that. I got to choose how I wanted to respond. And I immediately became involved as a volunteer with Nevada Donor Network because I had just been through what many parents can reflect that it, what what a nightmare it would be to lose a child and I just yes. I just did and I had chosen not to let it break me but more to make me and Nevada Donor Network was a very safe place where I could share my experience and share my love for Michael and create a, a place where we could educate the community and not make being an organ donor so scary and kind of um, reduce those myths, you know? Yeah. So that is how I got involved. Um, again, it's been about four years since I lost Michael and I, I have done so many miracles have happened just being involved and meeting families and meeting people in the community and having that impact and um, having that story and that power behind it. So Nevada Donor Network, like I said, um, saved saved my life and saves the life of, of so many others. And I thought, what better way could I serve than to serve others? So I, I did, I was invited to become an advisory board member two years ago. And it has it has changed so much. We get we get the opportunity to discuss how can we make an impact in the community. How about we try this program or that program or or this social media thing? Let's try to get more. That that's what being an advisory board member is 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 supporting the governing board and 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 supporting the um, the organ tissue and eye donation um, world. That's that's wow. that's why I do what I do. Wow, cool. Wow, what a story. What a story. I'm so saddened for your loss. Thank you. Um, but what a legacy. And your son Michael's got to be so proud of how you've turned this tragedy into something positive. I agree. He, um, I, yeah. So uh, congratulations on being able to do that. Thank it, you. That could not have been easy and sure. still can't be easy. Yeah, yeah. How would you say Nevada donor network has, you, you touched on the way some of it's um, touched your life. What would you say has been the biggest impact on your life or how has it helped you? Because it wasn't just donating the organ. It right. sounds like there's been some emotional Absolutely. support there and yeah, bring you back to life kind of thing. After Mike, okay, I will have to say from the beginning, sitting in the hospital room with Michael on life support and having Ray, Ray was his name, um, from Nevada Donor Network come in at bedside and just very gently explain how this process will work. Um, a lot of families want to be organ donors, but the wait and the sitting there of just waiting for organs to be matched are so painful for a lot of families that they just can't complete the process. And I could understand that. Just being a human and being so supportive and so loving, having experienced that, being in the medical field myself, this time it was my yes. turn, right? Mm -hmm. It changed the way I practice medicine. And I thought, what better way to give back than to pay it forward in a sense? So when I became a volunteer with Nevada Donor Network, I got so many opportunities to not only meet the public, um, discuss my story. I've, I've spoken on many stages now at this point. And I will tell you every single time you share, there's a, there's a little bit of healing that happens and a little mm -hmm. bit of peace that comes over you. Um, and, and again, that's a, a, a big part that Nevada Donor Network has, has given me. Um, but also working with Catherine and Shirley in the aftercare program who dedicate their entire day, night, weekends. I mean, we're talking about work-life balance. Mm. These people are so extremely dedicated to the cause and to the other families that are in need. Um, they develop 
grief programs and support groups and activities where families can get together and, and kind of share love, share grief together. Um, th that is just a snippet of support that Nevada Donor Network provides for the community. Uh, and especially for families like myself who are donor families, you know, it is a, it is a struggle sometimes. Um, you know, you're, you're grieving the loss of a loved one. Uh, but also, um, even recipients, I mean, they're also dealing with survivor guilt. Oh, yes. Or um, how come somebody had to pass away for, for me to live? And, you know, those parents that are waiting uh, at the transplant center for an organ for their daughter, like thinking, please, 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 you know, can, can we please, you know, get a heart today? But knowing when you stop and think about it, somebody's saying goodbye. Yes. You know, that feeling and, and not having that be guilt written, that is where Nevada Donor Network steps in and helps you with that and helps you make peace and, and grieve and have a, a support system. Um, so uh, that is, I mean, again, that is just the snippet. Um, not only that, but, um, you know, getting community awareness and, and uh, yeah, it's... Mm. Yeah, that support is so needed Absolutely. and is so often overlooked. It is. Um, a lot of people say they're too old to donate. Is this a myth or is there an age limit on people being able to donate organs? Sure. It, it is a myth. I, I'm going to break it. Um, in 2021, uh, the oldest documented donor is age 92. Oh my. So let's let's dispel the myth, yes. Uh -huh. um, and I am currently in hospice at the moment. Not on hospice, but in hospice. And we um, are able to assist families at time of signing onto hospice that if their loved one would like to become an organ donor, um, they can certainly have the opportunity to share um, corneal corneal uh, donation, um, skin even sometimes. It, it really just depends. And, and certainly I encourage, um, you know, listeners to sign up. And if it, if it is just for some reason you're unable to donate, at least, at least you said yes, mm -hmm. give it a go. Give it yes. a go. Uh, definitely sign up and, and, and see what happens. But there, it is a, it is a beautiful thing. Uh, in fact, my son's lung recipient um, was it, it was 61, 62 when he received his his new set of lungs. So, um, whether you're a donor or a recipient, um, you know, age isn't always a factor. It's you know, there's other yes. factors that go into it. Obviously, they've got to check box a, a lot of things off uh, for a, someone to receive an organ. Um, but age is not a disqualifier. Yes. Oh, yeah. Good. So we'll dispelled. Yeah. Yes, thank, thank you for answering yes, that question. Yes. <laughs> Stay tuned. Uh, we're going to come right back in, the, in a couple of moments. Um, for those of you who are looking for a good night out in the town or looking to host a special event, check out the Firelight Barn Dinner Theatre. They're one of our sponsors and I'm very happy to have them. We'll be right back. Country roads take me home to the land. Introducing Pacific Coast Capital, your partner in finance. We provide financing for your business. Speed, flexibility, and creativity are the foundation of our service. We'll help you navigate through change and opportunities. Our 90-plus years of experience ensures quick turnaround on loan decisions. Ride the wave to prosperity with us. Ready for new funding? Visit our website today at PacificCoastCap.com. Welcome back, everyone. Uh, our guest this, uh, this episode is Courtney Kaplan, representing uh, Nevada Donor Network. And I'd also like to thank Pacific Coast Capital 
who handle small business loans for corporations. If you're interested, please reach out to them. I thank them for being a sponsor. And um, so, Courtney, now April is Donor Awareness Month. Yes. And this show is being aired, of course, on the 10th of April. Perfect. So now on Friday the April the 12th, we all need to wear blue and green. And that is We do. Why. So Donate Life uh, is an organization nationwide uh, that um, is basically the umbrella for OPOs, which is Organ Procurement Organization. Um, pretty much every state has their own. So Nevada Donor Network would obviously be for Nevada. We've got Donate West and um, we've got Donate Life all across the nation. And their colors are uh, of a greenish and a bluish. Uh, and that is a symbol of Donate Life. Those are the colors. Um, I, I, I'm sure they're incorporated, to be honest, because they are a very specific type of color. Uh, and uh, again, it is um, all about donor awareness. Sure. So bringing those colors together and um, educating the community on how important it is to uh, you know, say yes to being an organ donor. And if you have reservations, ask questions. It's all about education. For sure. And there's a couple of other things that people can do do during Donor Awareness Month. And uh, you have Hope Glows Walk on um, April the 27th. Would you like to give us a little bit of information about that? Sure. So Hope Glows will be at the Exploration Peak Park which is at Buffalo and uh, I believe it's, um, what is that? The, the highway that heads out to Pahrump. Oh. It's over there on that side of town by um, Mountain's Edge. Uh, it will be starting at five o'clock is registration. 8 p.m. is when the walk starts. And it's $30 for registration. You can start your own group or you can walk on your own. Mm -hmm. um, you know, but it, it is, it is important to recognize why. Why are we doing this walk? Why are we trying to raise awareness, raise money? Um, in Nevada, there's over 600 individuals waiting on the transplant list, oh. um, waiting for a life-saving organ, in addition to the 100,000 across the nation who are just sitting on the transplant list. You know, we walk for those folks um, every eight minutes. You know, we, we lose somebody who's waiting on the transplant list and every 17 minutes somebody's added. I mean, this is, this is why we're doing this. We're doing yes. this to save lives, bring awareness, bring education. Um, if you think one doesn't matter, one matters very much. Your support, uh, your, um, your time walking with us, showing others, you know, it's, it's about the community. That's what Hope Glows is about. And they have this every year? Every Hope year, Glows. every year. What a worthwhile, uh, what a worthwhile event! To it hold is. Every year. It's beautiful. And so nationwide, they're having these Hope Glow walks. Hope across Glow, the nation. yes. Wow. Yes. Now you mentioned the other organizations throughout the United States. Um, do you network with these as it relates to organs? If if you have more organs than are needed for of a specific organ, and another state needs it, do you trade or swap or? Exchange, you know what? That's say. a good question. A lot of people don't know this about Nevada. Currently, we are only able to transplant kidneys, and that is even on a limited basis. So if you need a heart, lungs, liver, um, currently, we do not have a transplant center here. So all of the individuals who are registered donors, and like my son, who um, had six organs available to donate, because we don't have a transplant center here, if there is a Nevadan who's on the list and kind of towards the top and say next in order, they have to move out of state, to Arizona, um, California, Utah, where there are transplant centers. They have to establish themselves there and wait. If they are unable to do that, and perhaps they have young children, they have a career that they can't uproot from, uh, they will not have the ability to receive an organ. Wow. Yeah. 
So that is one part that Nevada Donor Network um, is trying to change, but we can, we can talk about that later. Um, but to answer your question, yes, um, UNOS is the national organ um, kind of distribution center, if you will. Mm -hmm. So they have a huge list of all those individuals that are waiting. And as organs come up, they try to match severity, place, where, who, what. So if those organs are coming out of Nevada, uh, and again, like I said, if, if they're not really able to transplant them here unless it's a kidney, and again, it's limited, then they go to the next like mile radius and then the next. So it does, it does actually connect to those gotcha. other um, organ procurement oh, OPOs. Um, so yes, they do communicate communicate quite a bit with each other to coordinate care. I mean, it so, is about life. It is absolutely. about second chance at life. It's yes, that's the goal. Yes, for sure. Yes. And you, you mentioned that uh, we don't have a, an organ replacement center here. Um, it's a beautiful segue to my next question uh, because there's a program called End the Wait. End the Wait. And would you like to give us some details about this End the Wait program? Because I think it's a very important aspect of the Nevada Donor Network. It sure. seems to me from what I could read. Sure. So End the Wait is a, is a movement. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's a mission. It's a movement. And this is where that education comes into place. Um, each individual can donate eight organs. And, and enhance the lives of over 72 people, one, one donor, where that power of one, one, if you think about that, the impact that one person can have on so many lives, that is what um, the power of one is and the, um, and the weight. We can't do this alone and without and, and, and this is something I say, without donors, there are no survivors. No. And that is an extremely powerful thought for people to just sit with, that without donor families, without saying yes, without that heart on your driver's license, without that conversation about what your wishes are, um, there are no survivors. Because like I said, every, every eight minutes, we, we lose somebody on that list. And, and of course, we, we, we don't wish anyone's demise or any, any ill will toward anybody. Again, another myth, if I sign up and I come in and I'm unconscious and I happen to be brain dead or, or I'm almost there, they're not going to help me because they see I'm an organ donor and they're just going to want to swoop in. And that is not how it happens. No, that is not definitely. how it works here. Uh, absolutely not. There are tons of tests that they have to do. Um, just like they did with Michael before, you know, they can, they can substantiate if this is a brain death or a cardiac death. These are all things they have to go through. Um, but more importantly, it is about ending the wait is, is registering to be an organ donor. And if you've got some, uh, some misnomers or mismyths or questions, then ask, just sure. ask. Nevada Donor Network is always available. Any of your OPOs, Google it. Google's good. Google University is good. Find out. Well, you know, look it up. But yeah, yeah, there's there's a lot of misinformation, and it is all about the power of ending the wait and the power of one. Yeah. Well, and and before we leave today, we'll put out the information how people can reach out to you and do some research. Yes, because please. You've got a very incredible website yes. out there that gives out a lot of valuable information. Um, you mentioned that we don't have a treatment center here in the state of Nevada. Do you know, is there any plans to have one? Yes. Nevada Donor Network has been working tirelessly on the foundation side mm -hmm. to, again, bring awareness, involve state local authorities, um, bringing in monies and donors from outside, uh, and I mean um, financial donors. We are very, very close to uh, having that structure that we need the, the structure of the program. It, it will be called NTI, the National Transplant Institute. Um, do do um, keep your ears and eyes out because we're close. Good. We're close. 
we're close. Good. Uh, there's there's a, there's a lot of good things going on right now and uh, gearing toward us being able to slowly start to increase from kidneys to liver and perhaps pancreas and you know just starting to slowly build that program so that um, all of those six over 600 Nevadans uh, you know can convalesce and get support and get their medical care where they live and, and not have to uproot and tear families apart and it's it's just it's so it's so rough on these families uh when they when it they is. need to go but home. it sounds like yeah you're making a lot of headway a lot of headway we're very almost close so there. well you're almost there yes. so let's keep thinking yes. the positive thoughts yes we're going to take another sponsorship break and um please listen to their message we'll be right back at Lucia Capital Group, we've been helping people manage risk and plan for their future through some of the most challenging market conditions. Volatility in the stock market will never go away. So it's really all about your strategy and how you react to it. Our bucket strategy aims to help you manage your financial goals even during the most uncertain times. I'm Joshua Dowden. I've been working with clients here for more than 16 years and I can help you as well. My office is right here in the heart of Summerlin, just north of Charleston Boulevard. Don't let the stock market determine the quality of your retirement. Call me today for a free consultation, 702-508-6421. That's 702-508-6421. Hello everyone and welcome back. And uh, once again, thank you Courtney Kaplan for being with us representing Nevada Donor Network. Yes. Now, one interesting thing that popped out of your experience is you have now written a book on it. I on have. On a subject called Transplant Hope, Inspiring Stories of Donor Heroes in Gifted Lives. Tell us a little bit about it. When did it come out? Sure. Uh, where did you get the inspiring stories from? How did you meet these people? Sure. <coughs> Excuse me. After Michael's accident, and it had actually made international news. So I was getting messages from Nigeria. Russia did a story. I mean, it just went global. And what I found most beautiful about this was so many people just wanted to share. They just wanted not only condolences and sorry for your loss, but a lot of them followed up with, you know, something similar happened in my family or I have a, a liver and I got my transplant 10 years ago or I lost my son and he was able to donate. I mean, the stories were just so impactful and so compelling. And after a while, it just sitting with all of this knowledge and all of these stories and these viewpoints and, and, and overcoming, it's about overcoming. I said, you know what? Um, I got to get a book together. I got to get a place where these folks can have a safe place to pour out their experience, uh, their tragedy into triumph, or e even if even if they're in a place that's that's still a little gray. Um, here's here's a place where we're going to bring the whole spectrum from donor family like myself all the way through to recipients. So I put the word out. A few of the individuals who wrote stories, uh, I wrote one about Mikey, my son. Um, my ex-husband, Mikey's dad, wrote a chapter. And Harold, my son's double lung recipient, wrote a chapter. Uh, and so we've got those first three there. And um, a, a few people actually who work at Nevada Donor Network have personal connection to organ donation. So um, there are about three individuals who wrote a chapter as a recipient family and we also have a, a donor family like myself there's 11 authors who took that moment to sit I'll tell you if you haven't written a book um, it is quite cathartic uh, sitting with especially a story that's so emotionally um, moving whether again recipient or donor doesn't matter but having to sit and write out the feeling and what you smell, tasted, sound, like all of that and get in details, um, it is so extremely healing. And I know that these authors 
have had so much healing and so much outreach and so many people just this book changed everything. Some of them didn't have anything to do with organ donation, but really was just, my gosh, I'm sitting here with this issue and I can see that you've all overcome this issue. You know, I can get up, pull my big girl pants on and get out there. And, and that really is just so inspiring. We've had story after story after story oh. of the impact that the book has had. Um, but yes, I did put out a word out to ask if there were any donor or recipient families besides the ones that I already knew of uh, that would be interested in joining. And we actually are starting to work on the second Good volume. For you. It, Good it, uh, for you. This one released January 31st, so it's it's a new baby, mm -hmm. um, but it's available on Amazon. So yeah, Good. definitely That's take a, a look. So people can buy it on Amazon. Yes. Good for you. Yes. Good for you. you. Congratulations. And that's also helping raise awareness. It is. Um, where can, if people do want to um, donate organs and they never have signed up, where do they go? You mentioned the DMV earlier. Is that one place where DMV, people go? Where else is They there? definitely can. Um, you can also go on registerme.org. Uh, and that will be a quick clickety click through the internet, uh, sign up that way. And uh, definitely, even if you don't have organ donation on your card uh, or on your driver's license and you find yourself, you know, in a medically trying situation, you can always alert the medical staff that you would like to either get more information or you would like to have that conversation. Um, you can certainly do that, you know, at bedside but it's always good to kind of have that in the registry uh, on registerme.org again or DMV and also on your iPhone, on your health app, you can click through there and you can also register through there. Oh, okay, good. Yeah. That's, uh, that's all good to know. Yes. Good to know. Yes. Now, volunteers, are you looking for volunteers? And if so, what qualifications are you looking for in people if they wish to volunteer? Sure. Always looking for volunteers. Yes, Nevada Donor right. Network is so connected with the community. Um, and that includes Reno. So all the state. There are um, community events like the Silver Nights, Vegas Nights. Um, we do a lot with NASCAR. So there are always opportunities to have a booth or a table. And really just being present answering any questions anybody has, uh, but definitely could use volunteers. And and like myself, who kind of wanted to be more towards the hands-on with, with families and patients, uh, you certainly have opportunity to do that. Uh, you know, there's mailers and things that we do. We outreach. We do a donor remembrance ceremony every year where we bring the donors, families together um, at one beautiful place, celebrate their families. We do a beautiful sand ceremony. So anything... Um, surrounding getting that set up. Um, we send out little uh, like candle and little, just a little mm -hmm. goodies for families. Sure. Mm -hmm. So um, any of those things can all fall under what, what the volunteers mm -hmm. do. Yes. Wow. You know, this, this truly is an amazing organization. And Courtney, I can't thank you enough for coming out, sharing your knowledge on it, sharing a very personal experience. Sure. That still has to be painful, you know. Yeah. You learn to live with it. You don't you do. get over that grief. That's right. You learn right. to live with it. And you live with it. That's it's, right. It's very painful still. So thank you for sharing your story. Sure. And uh, Mikey, you have got to be so proud of him that as young age as he is, that he donated his organ. He chose to do that at such a young age. He did. Age. He did. Um, that, that's amazing. Um, if you want to learn more about the organization, can you share with us the, the website address and the phone number where people can call? Sure. Uh, NevadaDonorNetwork.org uh, would be the website. And um, there is a contact me page so you can fill out your name and number. Mm -hmm. If you would like someone to contact you that way, uh, you can always um, dial up with the digits, give them a phone call. There's emails. Um, I don't know if you're going to have my contact information on there, but they're certainly available to reach out to me as well. Uh, I'm always there to kind of help guide uh, mm -hmm. anybody, questions or, or comments, any, anything. We're always here. That's cool. Thank you so much for being a guest here today and sharing your knowledge on this organization. Thank you. 
you're doing amazing, wonderful work and giving back to the community. Thank you Thank so, you so much. much. Really appreciate it. And I also appreciate uh, the station owner, uh, John Stars and show producer for allowing me to host this program on WWDB TV. I appreciate our sponsors who make this show possible, The Firelight Barn, Pacific Coast Capital, Lucia Capital Group, and my business partner, RJ Champion, whose message you'll see at the end of this program. If you have any comments or questions, please feel free to reach out to me, Stephen at thegiftofgiving.vegas. And I'd like to finally thank you, the viewer, for tuning in and listening to this organization and what they're accomplishing every single day. And um, hopefully you'll join us next week. In the meantime, stay safe, be kind to one another, have a great week. Goodbye for now. Mr. R.J. Champion is proud to sponsor WWDB-TV's series, The Gift of Giving, and wishes the program much success. Congratulations and gratitude to the featured guests and the organizations they represent. Our community is well served by your tireless efforts to make Nevada a better state for all its residents.